on there. And Allison and Jonathan still a very active scene out here. Let me step out of the way and show you what's going on. This actually involved the U.S. Park Police and Fairfax County Police were involved as well. Now, right now, these police cars are blocking the vehicle that crashed. This is video we took when they weren't blocking it. You can see it's almost on its side there with the doors open. From what I am being told at this hour, this all started on the GW Parkway, which the U.S. Park Police patrol. Haven't, they haven't been able to tell me yet exactly what this guy was wanted for, but they wanted him bad enough that they chased him. He wound up getting off the parkway and onto Fort Hunt Road here in the Alexandria section of Fairfax County, and that's when the vehicle wrecked. Neighbors describe hearing well over one shot. I got differing accounts of just how many, but I heard that they heard a few shots here in the neighborhood. Talked to one neighbor who says usually this is a very quiet place on a Friday night, so he was pretty surprised when a chopper flew right over his home. And then next thing you know, we heard the loud, pretty loud boom. And it was, we weren't quite clear, was, was that a gunshots or car wreck? So, we, you know, we still really don't know at this point. And here's a live view from the sky right now of the scene. Again, this was a chase done by U.S. Park Police, but Fairfax County Police were involved at one point as well. We're still waiting on inf more information again about what exactly this person was wanted for. We do know the person in that vehicle was shot by police. We're awaiting his condition, and we're also waiting again what he's wanted for. Police have promised to give us more information in the next few minutes here. So if we get it before the end of the show, we'll certainly bring it to you. Reporting live in the Alexandria section of Fairfax County. I'm Tom Rousey, ABC 7 News. All right, Tom, thank you. And we are also following breaking news on the Georgetown University campus tonight. That's where a fire broke out in a lab there. DC Fire says three people were taken to the hospital but were not seriously hurt. Hazmat teams were called to look into the materials involved in this. We are awaiting more details and we'll bring you new information as soon as it comes in. Do stay up to date with breaking news. You can sign up for text alerts at WJLA.com slash text. Mm -hmm. Well, the Storm March 7 forecast now with a few things to watch out for as we head into the weekend. It was chilly this morning. It is going to be cold. There's a few chances for some rain coming up. Our Storm March 7 Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly, he joins us now in the Weather Center tonight. Bill, what can we expect this weekend? Well, we're going to look at the tail of kind of two different days. A warm front comes through tomorrow, brings us some rain, and then we're going to be much cooler as we head on into our Sunday. We're watching temperatures right now, and notice Manassas down to 28 currently, 36 in Leesburg, 32 Winchester. So the temperatures are down, but they shouldn't go much much lower than they are right now. In fact, maybe ticking back up a little bit. We have some clouds that have worked into the area, but right now we are dry. However, if you look back here to the west, there are quite a few rain bands that are working through Michigan all the way down, cutting right around the Ohio Indiana border. This is our weather system that will affect us as we go on out twice tomorrow, once potentially in the morning, mainly north, and then again tomorrow night late, which we'll talk about. Notice the wake up temperatures. They go up a little from where they are right now, still in that mid to low 30 range. Uh, it's a chilly night, but tomorrow we should bounce back up to 60 degrees and that high temperature tomorrow may not be at your uh, typical, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. It may be much later than that. We'll explain coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Bill, we'll see you then. Thanks. Parents in Prince George's County concerned tonight after two reports that someone exposed themselves to children. It happened at Benjamin Stoddart Middle School, and Tim Barber joins us live nearby. Tim, what do we know about this suspect? Well, Allison, tonight investigators don't have a lot of information to go on. All they know is that these kids saw a man in a gray car, but they don't even know what kind of car it is. The story of a man cruising the streets, exposing himself to kids, is turning parents' stomachs. He's sick. That's my, that's my, he's sick. Prince George's County Police say a man in a gray car exposed himself to a boy and a girl from Benjamin Stoddart Middle School. The first case happened on November 9th, while the girl was walking home along Key Street near Derek Holmes' house. A lot of children walking up down the street, but I had no idea that anything like this was going on in the neighborhood. The second case was yesterday along 23rd Parkway, where the boy was walking to school. But investigators and school officials told ABC7 they just found out about the crimes this week. I, don't, I mean, I'm just at a loss of words, you know. That, that's crazy. And investigators say they are increasing patrols in the area around that school. Reporting live in Prince George's County, Tim Barber, ABC 7 News. Tim, thanks. In a final chapter now in a horrific murder case, the man who pleaded guilty to killing a D.C. yoga instructor will be spending the next 30 years of his life in prison. Dwayne Johnson abducted Tricia McCauley on Christmas Day. Police say that she was raped and tortured before being strangled. Mm -hmm.
Well, happening right now, the search for who shot and killed a Baltimore police detective this week. The reward for any information in the murder of Detective Sean Souter continues to climb tonight. It's now standing at $210,000. Souter was shot in the head Wednesday night as he was investigating a murder case. He died of his injuries yesterday. I'm Nancy Chen at the live desk tracking the latest on a massive fire in upper Manhattan burning through a six story building. Five people were treated for injuries, including four firefighters. Those injuries are said to be non life threatening more than 250 firefighters tonight, though, battling those intense flames with strong winds, making that fire even more difficult to put out. That building houses stores on the first floor and more than 30 apartments on the upper floors. Another concern for fire fires here is the potential of that 100 year old building collapsing. Now, one heartwarming moment through amidst all of that damage here, firefighters rescuing a dog for an apartment on a lower floor, reuniting it there with its owner. At the live desk, Nancy Chen, ABC 7 News. That's a nice scene to see. Nancy, thanks. Investigators say it'll be tomorrow at the earliest before they can enter a senior living center that was devastated by fire in Pennsylvania. Look at this. This is what firefighters were up against here. About 150 people were inside when this fire broke out. Some brought out in wheelchairs or even rolled out in beds. Neighbors raced in to help and evacuate some of the residents, wrapping them in blankets to keep them warm. At least 27 people were injured. A handful of residents now are being reported unaccounted for. The Reverend Jesse Jackson says he suffers from Parkinson's disease. The 76 year old civil rights leader released a statement saying it has become challenging for him to get around. Jackson says he is now dedicated to physical therapy, hoping to slow the disease's progression. 